Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Tech Time. We're gonna talk battery modules. So on today's episode, we're gonna look at the Tesla Model 3 and the Chevy Bolt Packs, as well as the Mercedes B-Class, Kaub, LG, and the Tesla Model S modules. I'm gonna look at series and parallel, voltages and temperatures, look at each module type by itself in a bit more depth, and then we're gonna discuss how you choose the right module type for your EV conversion. So hit a subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and let's go. So this drawing here is meant to be an LG module, so you can see how it is inside. Now they are a 4P3S configuration. So we're gonna go into a bit more depth as the 4P3S parallel and series configuration pretty much copies over to most other batteries. They're gonna be in some sort of parallel, some sort of series. So what does 4P mean? So four in parallel means they've taken four cells, in the case of the LG pouch cells, which I've drawn as these long cylinders here. Um, so they've taken four of them and they've linked the positive ends of the four together and the negative ends of the four together. And that parallels those cells together. Now what that'll do is it will maintain the same voltage but it'll increase the current that you can pull out by four, basically. Uh, it also increases the amp hours in parallel. And then you can series them to increase your voltage. Now increasing your voltage in series does not increase your amp hours. Parallel is what increases your amp hours and your current. Now series means basically you've taken the positive from say cell group one, linked that into the negative of cell group two, and then taken positive of cell group two, linked it into the negative of cell group three. So as you can see, we then we jump up basically in nominal voltages, as I put here, by 3.65 volts, up to 7.3 volts, then up to 11 volts nominal. From our, pos from our negative side here to our positive side here. Now, let's talk about minimum maximum voltages for lithium-ion batteries in general. All the ones I have here are all gonna be the same minimum maximum voltages. So we state minimum voltage as 3.2 volts. Now you can drop on most of them down to 2.8, but there is no point and you'll do damage to the battery. Nominal voltage is normally 3.6 to 3.7, depending on the manufacturer specification. And then maximum voltage, 4.2 volts. They, some of them can go slightly more, but as I said, we like to make sure we maintain the health of the battery. So zero state of charge will be 3.2 volts. 100% state of charge will be 4.2 volts. Now let's look at temperatures. Now this also copies over all the batteries I have here that we're going to discuss. So temperature wise, minus 20 to zero. That should be limited. So you shouldn't be pulling huge amounts of power or charging at high rates at that temperature because you will do damage to the health of the battery over long term. Zero degrees to 20 degrees is okay. You're not gonna get full battery performance. You're gonna do very minimal damage if you do try and pull more performance out of it and charging is fairly okay. Um, 20 degrees to 35 degrees is optimum. It's the best temperature to be at. That's gonna give you full performance and allow you to, to charge at full rate. Um, 35 to 45 degrees, you're getting a little bit warm, you're still gonna get really good performance, you're still gonna be able to charge, but you need to start thinking about keep getting those batteries cooler and not letting them get too hot. 45 to 60 degrees. Now, that should be limited. You should be doing a lot lower charging rate and you should be putting a lot less power out of them at that point. 60 degrees equals fire. It doesn't actually equal fire, I just like to scare people. Um, 60 degrees, you start to get into the risk of thermal runaway. So as you go from 60 degrees and above, there is that chance of thermal runaway. And yes, the thermal runaway does equal fire, which is why I have a battery management system and why on all of our battery packs, we do liquid cooling. So we can always maintain the temperature and keep it well below 60 degrees. Yeah, fire, run, just don't go over 60 degrees on lithium ion batteries. No matter what you do, just don't go over it. The specifications will say that people can go more, just there's no point in messing around with it. Stay safe, don't go over 60 degrees, basically. Um, now let's have a quick look at some of the other batteries we've got here and we'll lie all these out together so you can s compare sizes and I can talk through each battery type weights and those sort of things. Now this is the Tesla 100 kilowatt hour battery module. Now a Tesla P100 will have 16 of these in series. Now these are a 6.3 kilowatt hour module and they are an 86 parallel 6S configuration per module. 
Um, every module, every 18650 cell has these little tiny fuse wires on every single one. Calculations we've done, they blow at around 25 amps, we think. And it's really good for redundancy. That If you get an issue with the odd cell over time and you lose the odd one or two, the chances are you'll never know. The car will keep going as normal. They weigh about 28 kilograms each and they are known currently as the most power dense battery on the market. They're a little bit delicate, harder to mount and fit to your EV because you have to support them off the side rails. You cannot lay them flat on top of the bottom because this is just a very thin plastic sheet. So they have to be mounted, tend to allow something like a five to 10 mil air gap between each module. Um, and then we've got those special buzz bars that link module to module and we do the replacement BMS boards to go in them to allow you to connect them to an Orion BMS as such. Or there is some BMS on the market now that also fit with the original Tesla board, mod, uh, BMS boards to communicate and get them to balance that way. Now, if we take that module and you compare it to the LG module we do, There's quite a considerable size difference, but obviously this is 6.3 kilowatt hours, this is 2.6, but they're not, there's not a crazy amount in it if you put them next to each other, but what you have to remember is the Tesla module has built-in cooling. The LG modules don't. So that's the biggest advantage with the Tesla modules, you don't need to run a liquid cooling plate. Now moving on, we have the 5.3 kilowatt hour Tesla module here. Visually, it's pretty much the same. It only has two coolant outlets instead of the four, um, and it has 444 cells instead of the 516 cells that are in the 6.3 kilowatt hour battery. Now, weight difference wise, 25 kilograms, so only a couple of kilograms difference. Um, but pricing wise, you'll probably save yourself three to 400 pounds by going for the 5.3 than you will going for the 6.3, because 6.3s are very hard to get hold of, and everyone wants them. We're now going to take a closer look at the Cal battery and the Mercedes B-Class battery. Now this is the Cal battery that we get in brand new from a manufacturer. They're 2.2 kilowatt hours. They weigh 12.8 kilograms or 12.5 kilograms. One or the other. It's close enough. Um, they're a 3P4S configuration, unlike the LG modules that are a 4P3S configuration. So these are very useful in builds where you don't need to want the biggest battery pack in the world, but you want to get up to the right voltage. For instance, one of these, you could run a pack of these, get to 96S at about 50-ish kilowatt hours. Whereas with the LG batteries, you're going to be at, uh, I think it's about 80 kilowatt hours to get to a 96S. So consider be more batteries to try and find space for. And a lot of these EV conversions are done, as you said, they're a conversion, they're on an older car, so they weren't designed to take batteries in the first place. So space is always very difficult. Design-wise, they're pretty much the same form factor. Same four bolt holes. Uh, VW have also done the same form factor instead of Audi, so they're all extremely close, um, which is why we've designed coolant plates that fit both of these and the VW modules. So it's interchangeable. The only thing that tends to be majorly different is the buzz bar configurations. Um, now moving on, we have the B-Class module. B-Class module is a very odd form factor, but it is the same as the smart electric modules that I think everyone's probably used and seen. EV West had loads of them at one point. Um, the difference is these are a 7S configuration instead of a 14S configuration. They're a three kilowatt module, um, liquid cooled. Uh, they use 18650 cells, the same as the Tesla Model S batteries. Um, they're good for certain installations if you can get them to fit, but they're just over 90 centimeters long, so they are quite a long module. Perfect for things like G-Wizzes, RVs, solar storage. Uh, they're fairly readily available in Europe. Um, I think we've got like four or five packs of these on the shelf at any one time, uh, and they come 12 to a pack. So these are quite a good option. If you run a pack of 12, you're at 84S, and you're at 36 kilowatt hours, so pretty good pack. Um, same as we fit to our electric Porsche, actually, is a pack of these. And here it is. This is the Porsche that we put the Mercedes B-Class pack in. Now let's take a look at our Tesla Model 3 battery pack and our Chevy Bolt pack. Now this is our Chevy Bolt battery pack with a B. Don't confuse it with the Volt. It's a 60 kilowatt pack consisting of five modules. Now taking a closer look at the battery pack, as you can see, we have five modules in total. There's three larger ones and two smaller ones stacked at the back. 
Now these are liquid cooled. Um, there's a cooling plate that runs throughout the bottom of them. And then here with the double stacker, there's another coolant plate there. So they don't have coolant running throughout them like on the Tesla modules. Um, there are 3P96S for the whole pack. And from what we know, they're a very, very similar cell to what's in our 4P3S bricks that we've spoke about earlier. Now it's a really good pack. I actually run it in my electric skyline. And to be honest, it holds up really well. It's a fairly stiff pack with not a huge amount of voltage sag. So for performance purposes, it's really good. Um, they're a bit awkward to position in a car because they are actually quite long. Um, in the Skyline, we've actually taken the four, three longer ones and one of the smaller ones, stacked them all on end and put, positioned them upright in the Skyline front. And then we've put one in the rear behind the seats in the metal box. Now it has one mass of BMS, which links through everything. Um, and it's 440 kilos in total, which isn't bad for a 60 kilowatt hour pack, including all the metal work. Now, let's take a closer look at the Tesla Model 3 pack, which is even more difficult to package into your conversion. Now, this is a Tesla Model 3 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. The modules all together weigh in at 370 kilograms. Um, they are a 64 parallel and a 96S configuration on this model of pack. The 62 kilowatt hour packs are different. Now, the way these are laid out is you have two longer packs in the middle, which are 25S each, two smaller packs on the outers, which are 23S each. Now they have inbuilt cooling that runs up the center of the batteries um, in one end, out the other. And then they have an inbuilt battery management system on each module. Now, they're a pain to unwire because everything has got these little tiny aluminium fuse wires onto it. So you'd have to solder onto them if you want to use aftermarket BMS, or hopefully very soon someone will bring out a controller for the modules. Now, they're an awkward size. Um, if you unbolt them out of the pack, they're quite flexible. So if you're going to build a battery pack to house them, you need to make sure that it's load bearing. Um, as I said, they are an awkward size. So there's going to be very limited EV conversions that can use these maybe vans, trucks, etc. But there's gonna be loads and loads of these coming available on the market very soon because they are producing tens or hundreds of thousands of millions maybe of Model 3s. Um, I do expect more vehicle manufacturers to go this route uh, and you may even see soon some manufacturers doing sell direct to pack and do away with modules altogether. When that happens, it's gonna make it quite difficult for us as EV converters to buy used packs for vehicles but it's quite a few years to go yet, I'm sure of it. Now we've had a quick look over the Model 3 pack, let's have a discussion about how you choose the correct battery module for your EV conversion. So this is the list of six things you need to think of when selecting the right modules for your build. Number one is voltage and it always will be voltage. Without the right voltage, your system just will not work. So do not ever remove voltage from the top of the list, it's key. After that, one to six can shuffle around. If you're doing a commuter vehicle, range is gonna become higher. If you're doing a little tiny mini, for instance, space and weight might be key. Or you might be on a really tight budget, whereas cost comes into it. So these two to six, you need to rejig to suit your build needs. And then work down through your list to find the ideal modules for your build. Now, I'll be as helpful as I can. Leave a comment and I'll reply to it with as much information as I can share and trying to help you guys out as much as possible on the right module selection. Also, check out our website. We've got quite a few different battery module options on there, and we'll be doing more and more builds in the future using different battery types and showing you what suits and fits different vehicles. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Share it on social media with your friends, and please come back for the next video.